A very important discussion to be had now as the Red Cross says that we are experiencing the worst national blood shortage in more than a decade. And as we suffer a tremendous need right now, it's hard to understand why a major part of our population still can't donate blood. The FDA is facing a lot of pressure now to revise the blood donation policy for people who have sex with gay or bisexual men. The restrictions are seen as discriminatory by LGBT advocates and many others in the medical community. Joining me now for more on this, ABC News medical contributor and emergency physician, Dr. Darian Sutton, also president and CEO of GLAD, Sarah Kate Ellis. Thank you both for being here. All right, Doc, let's start with you. Just lay out why this policy is still in effect from the perspective of the FDA. So this is really just a relic of the past. <clears throat> it was born out of the HIV epidemic during the initial times when we had difficulties testing for HIV and those who were most at risk included gay and bisexual men. However, since that time, we have, we have gone incredible lengths in understanding that we can efficiently test for HIV in blood donations, so much so that the risk of transfusion-related transmission of HIV is incredibly low, estimated at one in 21 million. So I think that at this point, these decisions are no longer scientific space they're just simply discrimination so doc then why why in 2022 now are we still talking about this if it's archaic and it's clearly discriminatory you know, it clearly is. And to be honest with you, if you feel confused, I feel confused as well. As a first responder and a provider and a gay man myself, I cannot donate blood. And it just simply doesn't make sense. I think we need to stop focusing on sexual orientation and rather discuss sexual behavior because that's where the risk, risk lies. And anyone is at risk for HIV transmission. And I think rules like this continue to stigmatize particular groups when it should not happen. Points well made, and thank you just for personalizing this, uh, Darian. And and you know, speaking as as a gay man, also a doctor, very important uh, to make clear where you stand and how important this is. Sarah Kate, you know, let's talk about the White House and and this statement that they sent us because we questioned them exactly uh, about this and the discriminatory nature of the policy. The White House saying the legacy of bans on blood donation continues to be painful, especially for LGBTQ communities. The the president is committed to ensuring that this policy is based on science, not fiction or stigma. While there are no new decisions to announce at the moment, the FDA is currently supporting the advanced study, a scientific study to develop relevant scientific evidence and inform any potential policy changes. Is this enough? Are you satisfied with this statement? I think this is a little too late. Uh, I'm, I'm, I think the Biden administration supports moving to um, science and out of stigma, but I do believe that we're late to the game here. A lot of European countries, um, Greece, the UK, Canada, France is about to join them where they've lifted these bans that are based in stigma and not science. And I think that it's time that America and the United States followed suit here as well. It's costing a lot, right? So here we have, according to the Williams Institute, 360,000 men who would donate, who have said that they would donate blood. That's 600,000 pints of blood, which could save nearly a million lives. So this is an only hurting LGBTQ people with reinforcing the stigma. It's also hurting every American who needs blood and access to clean, good blood right now during this crisis. Absolutely. Point well made. And, and Dr. Sutton, you know, as the Red Cross calls this the worst blood shortage that we have seen in a decade, if indeed, um, you know, people who have sex with gay or bisexual men were able to give blood donations right now, how much of a difference would that actually make? It would make an incredible difference. As Sarah Kate just said, revising, revising these uh, rules can estimate an increase of six, over 600,000 pints of blood. Many people don't know, but every two seconds an American needs a blood transfusion. At work, Kira, I use blood transfusions almost on the daily in emergency rooms for my trauma patients. But you can also think about patients outside of the ER delivering mothers, chemotherapy pa or patients on chemotherapy or with chronic illness. It's unfortunate that we have to make difficult decisions in the times like this because then we have to ration care and that leads to suboptimal outcomes for our patients. 
So, Sarah Kate, I'm looking at GLAD's numbers here, and um, you have put together this estimate that if the policy was indeed lifted, your numbers here show 300,000 new Americans would be eligible to donate blood. Uh, now, the Red, Cars, the Red Cross apparently is arguing that they don't have this same data that suggests this. Tell me how GLAD was able to arrive at those numbers. So those are through the Williams Institute, which is a think tank and research um, out of UCLA. Um, and so they are the ones that have conducted the study and have done um, the self-identification as LGBTQ men, and then additionally, who would donate the blood. But there's another number, which is 25,000 people have already signed, including the American Medical Association, the Red Cross, who have already signed a petition that we have at glad.org to say to lift this ban. This is immediate. Now, the FDA is conducting yet another research study that is unnecessary at this point. As Dr. Sutton said, the research has been done. We understand and science has caught up to the stigma that was from the early 1980s around AIDS and what we didn't know. We know a lot now and now we need our policies to reflect the science and the new knowledge that we have. So then with that said, um, you know, I keep wanting to say Darian because you're a friend. Dr. Darian Sutton, <laughs> doc, I'm just gonna call you my friend, the best, the best doc. Um, okay. So the, the rules then, what, what, what do you think the FDA uh, should specifically have in place right now um, uh, to replace these current restrictions, archaic restrictions? Great question, Kira, and I accept Darian from you. Uh, so I think personally <laughs> that we should focus on behavior rather than orientation. Uh, we should really screen patients based off of their activities that they've recently had, because then that helps us to risk stratify for those who may be high risk for HIV transmission. But also it helps for a moment of education for patients, to be honest with you. I think that it's really helpful to grab these moments and not only help with provision of additional doses, or excuse me, additional donations, but also, again, providing that education that's so vital to the community and releasing that stigma that only gay men are susceptible to HIV infections, which is simply not true. And I hope this, I guess we say no question is a stupid question, but I hope I'm not putting myself out there. From what I remember, even from going through my fertility, I mean, isn't there a way, an easy way to just test blood? Like, let you know, if we're in such a massive shortage, let people donate. And if there are specific tests you need to do to make sure that that blood is okay, then why can't we just go that route? Or is that just too much to ask, Doc? It's not too much to ask. Testing blood for HIV is a regular requirement of all blood donations. All blood is tested, highly tested, not just for HIV, but other communicable diseases that can be transmitted from one person to another. I think these rules were born at a time when the testing was limited, very much how it is now when we talk about this pandemic. But times have changed since the 1980s, and we now can accurately identify. Recent studies from the 1990s show that the incidence of actual HIV prevalence in gay men who are donating blood was less than 0.5%. You know, that comparative to the actual prevalence of disease around that area, which is around 11%, shows that it's very simple to test and you can easily identify which blood products would not be able to be donated. Well, Sarah Kate, I think you've got another tremendous advocate here uh, to work alongside with you, and that is our Dr. Darian Sutton. I appreciate you both so much. Such an important discussion to have. Let's keep talking about it. Sarah Kate, we will follow your advocacy as well. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.